Hi, I'm Tessa Monopoly, cosmetic chemist and trainer here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to show you how to make a sensitive skin body wash. So this body wash contains a fantastic active with excellent data to show anti-irritant results, but it does discolor the product. So it would be best to pack in an opaque container because the results speak for themselves. Now let me show you how to put it together. Okay, so starting off, I have my water face here. I do have it in a beaker because I am going to be using my overhead mixer today. Now to this, I'm going to be adding some Isolux Ultra Mild by InnoSpec. Now this is a concentrated surfactant blend. So this has um, sodium lauryl methyl acetheonate. It's got cocamidal propyl betaine, which is anthoteric. It's also got a taurate, a lauryl glucoside, and also cocoa glucide. So it's got a mixture of anionic, amphoteric, and non-ionic surfactants. This creates a very nice mild blend of surfactants as well. So perfect for our sensitive skin. Now to this, I'm going to be adding some of the Kerazine MB. This is by Inalex. Now this is an anti-static and also a conditioning additive. So it's a novel quat free polymeric conditioning hair care additive that improves feel and reduces static charge but we are going to be using it in a body wash so it's a conditioning agent it's going to create what's well, going to improve gloss lubricity it's also going to help with reducing the usage of polycotonium agents it's a good replacement for amodimethicone it also improves compatibility and also reduces surfactant-induced skin irritation in cleansing applications. So again, really good to use in a sensitive skin body wash because we do not want to add any type of irritation or anything that's going to aggravate the skin. So I'm going to add that into my ice lux. I'm just going to give it a quick stir and then I'm going to add it to my water face and we're going to use our overhead mixer to start bringing that together. I'm just going to go add my surfactant blend into my water. And I'm just going to start mixing that one together. This will actually thicken up quite a bit on its own. Um, as you can see, it's started to uh, thicken and viscosity a little bit. Now, when working with surfactants, you do want to use low shear. If you use anything high shear, it's going to create a lot of bubbles and a lot of foam, especially in a small lab sample like so. Sometimes that can still be hard to avoid as well. So while that's stirring, I'm going to put together my next phase here. So I have some diesel glucoside in here. This is going to help bring together um, a, another ingredient that I'm going to be using. But firstly, I'm going to um, add some passionate oil. This is going to add a little bit of emolliency and softness to the skin upon application. It's going to help with the spread as well on the slip. And I'm just adding a little bit of token fair onto that one as well. Now, my next ingredient I'm going to be adding is the Alpin Hillmore extract, which is peat extract. So I have used this before in another formulation. So this is another really good ingredient to add for sensitive skin. It's really good for adding uh, mildness, so helping the skin irritation or skin sensitivity. It's also really good for skin barrier. Uh, loss of radiance and also uh, inflammaging as well. It's also really good for um, acne, good for oxidative stress. It's got good uh, promotion for skin's own healing and repair capacity, and also good for maintaining and balancing the skin microbiome. Now I am adding it to my oil and uh, my diesel glucoside. It's gonna help um, make it a bit easier to add into my surfactants. Give that one a stir. Just wet the powder as much as you can with this mixture. This is gonna make it a lot easier to incorporate. Almost looks like a batter of chocolate cake. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna add that in it to our surfactant blend here and our water. And we're just going to continue stirring that until it's homogenous. 
you do want to make sure this is really well incorporated because you don't want any of it any of the pea extracts in down the bottom or sinking this one or sitting on top either so we are going to give that a good stir for a little while until it's properly uh, incorporated Now with the Hillmore extract, you can add less if you don't want this desired dark color. Obviously less will create a lighter color. You can add a little bit more as well, um, but it gives like a nice a dark chocolate brown color. And obviously that's not gonna stain the skin either. <laughs> okay, so that's looking nice and homogenous. I'm still gonna keep stirring as I'm gonna be adding a little bit of gum just to thicken it up just a little bit. So in my bowl here, I've got some glycerin to this. I'm adding some xanthan. This is the Videscence Xanthan by BASF. So I'm just going to slurry that just to thicken it up a bit, add a bit of extra stability and viscosity. So it's going to help with particle suspension of this um, extract as well. So you want to make sure you've got a nice smooth slurry before adding that into your water phase, otherwise you will get fish eyes. And you do want to make sure you give it a good stir as well um, because you don't want a big blob of unhydrated gum just floating in your surfactant product as well. Generally, xanthan is more easier incorporated with high shear, but obviously we can't use the high shear because it will cause too many bubbles with the surfactants or foam. So we're using low shear, so it will need a little bit longer uh, stirring wise. Once you've got a nice smooth slurry, we've just added that into our mixture here. Just going to give that a stir for a little while so it hydrates well. Okay, so once your gum is incorporated and hydrated properly, we are going to be adding um, just a little bit of a glycerin based extract just for story. This is pineapple. You can, of course, use any. Allegory would be a good one because that's got um, like that soothing, hydrating type of story behind it. And of course, I'm just going to be adding my preservative here as well. Okay, so that's looking nice and homogenous and also very viscous. So now we're going to check and adjust our pH. So we're just going to check and adjust our pH. With acithionates, they generally do have that slightly higher pH. So we are looking at about 6.5 into even 7, just on that little bit of a higher side. And that's sitting at about 6.8. So that's that's good enough for me. Now we're gonna cover and leave it sit to overnight to check for any signs of instability, any separation, make sure that our extract stays nice and stable and suspended. And then we'll come back to it. Okay, and here's what our sensitive skin body wash is looking like the next day. I did give it one final stir just to make sure it's all homogenous and stable. As you can see, it's got really good viscosity. It's stable. It's got a really nice color to it as well. And I'm just gonna show you how it foams as well. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in my hand. As you can see, when you rub it in, the color's not as harsh. It's got nice, light, creamy foam to it. It's got really good slip as well, and it feels really nice and soft on the skin, nice and gentle. Well, there you go. That's how super easy it is to create a sensitive skin up body wash. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to receive notification on the rest of our videos. Happy formulating!